I wanna be a billionaire so freaking bad. Well, Scottish American industrialist Andrew Carnegie was considered the richest man in the world at the turn of the 19th century. A great philanthropist, he established more than 2,500 library buildings throughout the English speaking world, including 18 in New Zealand. His buildings were largely responsible for our free library lending system. Artist and photographer Mickey Smith's book, As You Will, pays tribute to the Carnegie Libraries of the South mm. Pacific. Welcome, Mickey. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having what me. What a fascinating... I knew nothing about this, about Andrew Carnegie and, Carnegie and his, his libraries in the mm. South Pacific. Nothing at all. What a fantastic thing for you to fixate on. What it is about him and his libraries that you really find so intriguing? Well, I found... Found, had, I had the same reaction when I moved here. What are the Carnegie Libraries doing here? Because where I come from in the Midwest of the U.S., they are in every small town. So um, I grew up with one in my hometown, and you see them along every every street side. So when I came here and discovered uh, the first one in Onehunga, right outside of Auckland, um, my son and I jumped on the train and went out and, and had a look and had a fluffy in the Carnegie Library. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I've done that too, actually. <laughs> no, OK, well, let's go back, because clearly you lived overseas for a yeah. while. What is your background and what brought you to New Zealand? Um, well, I, uh, I've, uh, I've been a photographer my entire career, um, and my husband is a Kiwi, nice. who I met in New Zealand uh, long, uh, 17 years ago. Uh, we met in Minneapolis. But before we left the States, we said, you have to move, you've got to move to New York, um, have yourself a piece of cheesecake, and, <laughs> and then we can go to New Zealand. You're on the right show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, did that, we did that a few times. So, um, and then we moved to um, New Zealand seven years ago. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, so that's how I got here. Here, but um, but really how the book came along was that I was really always I've always photographed in libraries and I've always concentrated on archives which is a very timely subject at the moment mm. um, and um, and so for the last 15 years I've been looking at these sort of buildings and collections why the libraries like what is it that makes I'm not so quite special? sure about why the libraries I mean as I've been asked that question for 15 years I, I think I you know I grew up going to them I, I've always loved them there's this certain stillness whether you photograph in a library that has um, a huge collection or no collection as a lot of them are being stripped away and there's um, a certain smell too yeah <laughs> yeah the smell the smell of the books um, but it's interesting in the states the books are very different than they are here here they're very well used in every library that I go to and in America there's oftentimes a lot of the photographs that I've taken of books uh, they've never been touched before wow Gosh. Yeah. okay that's Sad. good um, and, and this man Andrew he must have been an incredible man what more do you know about him uh, well, you know quite a few things about him, but he was um, one of his famous sayings was, "A man who dies rich dies disgraced." Mm -hmm. And so he was the richest man at the turn of the century. Um, he was Scottish, but came to um, America at the age of 12, where he made a fortune through railroad and industrial steel, and eventually sold his corporation to another captain of industry right. um, uh, at the turn of the century and, and um, decided to give away all of his money before he died, which wow. he was not able to do. There is still a Carnegie Foundation um, in New York. Why did he decide to set these libraries up in the South Pacific? Well, that's not very clear about the South Pacific. Because he was Scottish, the question is whether there was a Scottish connection between Dunedin, which was the first Carnegie Library in the South that Pacific. That makes sense. Yeah, mm. yeah. So um, actually, at the book launch, there were two um, descendants of the Carnegie um, family that came to the book launch, which was lovely. And, and they indeed had relatives in Dunedin. But there's no very clear answer about why they came here, except he did say quite often um, he didn't want the sun to set on the Carnegie libraries, so maybe that was part of his expansion of the British Empire. <laughs> and you must have had fun visiting all the different libraries. Yeah. And one I noticed in the book is my hometown Gore, and I had no yes. idea that this was a Carnegie library, now an art gallery, uh, an absolute beautiful building. There it is there. Yeah, yeah. And I've never seen an old photo of this building before? Well, it was hard to find old photographs of all the buildings. Um, there are 18 in New Zealand. There are only four in Australia and one in Fiji. Okay. And of all of them, that's the only round building. Really? <laughs> yeah, only round one? And Gore got it. Go Gore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they've taken very, very good care of it. So a lot of what the book is about as well is that we only have, of the 23 libraries, 
only um, three are left that function as libraries, and then there are a number that um, uh, have been demolished and a number of them that still stand mm -hmm. and have become other things like art galleries or beauty salons or Indian restaurants. Uh, it also includes copies of the legal documents of Carnegie's application um, and correspondence too regarding the free lending system that yes. he insisted on. Yes. Um, so there were a number of conditions. So he essentially would give the building, but he wouldn't fill it with books. That was the, the community's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't um, pay for the maintenance of it. So the, the, the community basically had to say, we have a piece of land and we have a collection of books and we promise that um, we'll take care, of, take care of this, but it will be free and open to the public. Right. So he, he would essentially just send the money down to create the structure of the building. To build the actual building itself. The building itself, okay. and, and actually we did, during the Hastings earthquake, they had built the building, um, and, and in the photograph, um, the historic photograph of Hastings, it says a gentleman's club along the bottom, um, but they didn't follow Carnegie's conditions, and that was that everything had to be free, and it had to be open to the public, but um, it wasn't so open in Hastings. Women weren't allowed in the reading room, and children under 12 weren't wow. allowed in. Aren't they the in. people that need the books the most? You think I the under well, 12s? Yeah. Uh, well, and, when, and when that building fell in the earthquake, they wrote back to Carnegie to get more funding mm. for another building and they said sorry you didn't yeah. follow the <clears throat> rules. Do you think he celebrated enough in New Zealand because until you've come here and talked to me about this I don't really know his contribution and gift to the country do you think he celebrated enough? Well, he's a very controversial figure. The bit that, that we didn't talk about is that um, a, lot of, a lot of the working men, my father was a union man, and, and I grew up not necessarily having a reverence for him because he really broke the American unions right. and worked, even though he came from a very working class family, um, he was not particularly a friend of the union and, right. and the working man. So there's some interesting correspondence mm -hmm. um, between, the, between Westport and Hokitika in the book um, saying, hey, how do we get this money from this man, but we don't want wow. to follow his rules because oh, we okay. don't trust him. And there was also talk that he treated his staff pretty badly as yeah. well. Yeah, actually there, was, there were riots in his steel mills where several people had died as well. So it's, it's no... There was a there was a quote um, from I think the St. Louis Dispatch that said you could build four million Carnegie libraries and never make up for what wow. you've done to working class America. Well, wow, this is fascinating. Thank you for putting this book together. You're an award winning artist. Thank you. What is next on the radar? Well, actually, um, another book has already kind of gone off to um, the dummies are out there, but um, I actually photographed in the Auckland University libraries several years ago before those collections came out. So um, right now I'm just looking for my venues to put that new work up. So yeah, It's really specific and it's impressive that when I looked through this book, I thought, a book about libraries? How interesting is that going to be? It's actually really, really fascinating. Well, you do, you know. Well, no, no, that's right. You know, you're so right. It's, it's fascinating and it's well worth having a good look at. So thank you so much for joining us, Mickey. Thank yeah. you for having me. An absolute me. pleasure. Uh, Mickey Smith's book, As You Will, Carnegie Libraries of the South Pacific, <laughs> is available right now. Oh, we're great book models. <laughs> thank you so much for coming in, thank Mickey. You.